वांगमे मनसी प्रतिष्ठिता मनो मे वाची प्रतिष्ठितम आविरावीर्म एधि वेदस्यम आणीस्थः श्रुतम मे मा प्रहासी अनेनाधीतेना होरात्रान समदधामि हरितम वदिष्यामि सत्यम वदिष्यामि तन्माम अवतु तद्वक्तारम अवतु अवतु माम अवतु वक्तारम अवतु वक्तारम ओम शांति 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 So today we take a uh, next hymn to Kuts by Kutsa and Girasa to Agni. It's a very short hymn, Gayatri, eight Gayatris, with the refrain, so it should we should go through it in one go. So it sounds like this Apanach Shoshuchad Agham Agni Shushudhi Araim Apanach Shoshuchad Agam. So you see, it starts with the refrain and ends with the refrain in the first verse. Sukshetriya sugatuya vasuya chaya jamahe apanach shoshuchat agam. Prayat bandishtha esham prasmaka sascha surayach apanach shoshuchat agam. Prayatte agne sura yo jaye mahi pratevayam apanach shoshuchad agham. Prayat agne sahasvato vishvato yanti bhanavach apanach shoshuchad agham. Tuam hi vishvato mukha vishvatach paribhur asi. Apanach shoshuchat agham. Dvishono vishvato mukha. Ati naveva paraya. Apanach shoshuchat agham. Sanach sindhum ivana yav. Yati parsha. Suastaye. Apanach shoshuchat agham. The last verse is difficult. It has to be deconstructed. Maybe like this. Sa. Sindhum iva navaya ati nach parsha swastaye apanach shoshuchadagham to break it into padas. Um, this apanach sho, I, I'm reconstructing the udatta, proper udatta, morphological accent. So I'm reading it and seeing this apa is the no, an a accent. Sho shuchat on sho, agham on am. So I'm giving you the accent as it should be. So it sounds a bit weird for people who are not used to it, but it was originally like this. So um, let us look into these. Apanach sho shuchat agham. Burn away from us the sin. Agne shushuddhi arayim, flame out on us the bliss. Arayim, he translates as bliss, the wealth, shining wealth of bliss. And again, apanach shoshuchatagaham, burn away from us the sin. Now, a few terms here which are interesting. Arayim as wealth or bliss, many times... And nearly all the time, Sri associates the wealth with bliss. And in a way, it is very close to the truth, yes. 
every wealth is a bliss of some kind. Otherwise, how do we know that it is a wealth? If it is not bringing that bliss, <laughs> that comforting feeling of enjoyment of life. The value by of things is measured by that comfort of bliss or convenience. So you can see that some flats or some houses in the in the middle of the city cost more than in the farm or somewhere away. So it's the value is measured by the demand. And demand is measured by bliss. Anyway. I went wrong route <laughs> through modern thinking of bliss and wealth and so on. Very primitive <laughs> thinking, but still <clears throat> it has its uh, kind of place. So wealth and bliss. It's interesting that we live here for this bliss yeah. only. We are looking for the bliss. Ananda Dieva Kalvimani Bhutani Jayante. It's from the bliss that all these beings are being born. Anandena Jatani Jivanti. By bliss they live. Anandam Prayanti Abhisam Vishanti. And into the bliss they go after death. So we are all living by bliss, coming from bliss and going into bliss. This is the vision of Taitiriya. Bliss is the foundation of our life, of our meaning, what we are here for. Uh, and to fulfill that blissful, uh, how to say, state of being is our aim, actually. So everywhere, all the movements, all the thoughts, feelings, emotions, interactions have to be blissful. And that means that the transcendental godhead is manifested yes when everything is blissful in this life fully absolutely that means that absolute truth is manifested so somewhere this bliss and truth have this interaction so we are looking for bliss as truth or for truth as bliss rather as shubindu says truth is a corridor towards the house of bliss so it truth is needed as a, as a transition towards bliss yeah? truth is an entry towards <laughs> to bliss amazing mm. so that's why uh, uh, vijnana is before ananda maya purusha uh, vijnana maya purusha the truth is to be realized before bliss is fully realized. Right. And it's a bit big question, what is truth? Yeah. Uh, but interestingly, Agham is opposite to Raim. When Raim is shining blissful truth, or truthful bliss rather, uh, then Agham is that it's from Am Ag um, from here Ahi also it's something which is Amhas narrowness darkness blindfulness all these words are used uh, to indicate sin sin means we restrict our extension of consciousness you know we narrow it down. And darkness itself is the greatest narrowing agent for the light. Yeah? Darkness restricts, so to say, the shininess of space. So we become less and less um, present throughout the space. And so there is a dense darkness where light disappears totally. And this is Ahi Amhas. Python, that python which has to be killed, that uh, snake, yeah, which is narrowing down, squeezing us down into the very narrow space. And this is agham also. So these are kindred words from the same root. So we translate it as sin, but sin is very much loaded by uh, Christian religion, yes. If 
we have this mm -hmm. original sin, it's a bit different, truly speaking, very different from this sin. So, but we don't have better words. I once heard a, a, a regarding sin, uh, I once heard a priest say that sin is essentially separation from God. So I think that's fairly consistent with this meaning, with right. separation from the higher consciousness. Right, right. It's a good priest, it seems. He understood something more than just original sin of you know, mm -hmm. between Adam and Eve, but that they tried to uh, to have relations. Yes, he was exceptional. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I actually saw that kind of a quote in a church or something like that, and then I thought maybe the initial basis of Christianity came from that spiritual experience, and then it was falsified by the crudity or men of mental concepts or something like that, because uh, uh, whenever there is separation from God, there is suffering. So that's why there is this entire thing about Christianity, about bringing on repentance, I think that meaning of becoming closer to God or something like that. There was a deep spiritual experience between behind all that of Christianity. But uh, so what exactly that sentence I actually saw in a church that was written and it was like from that original spiritual experience. And I was kind of shocked to see that there is such a false conception of Christianity and so much uh, pain about that. But uh, the entire thing has such a deep value and right um i'm afraid that they understand it as uh, god sent them out of the paradise you know separated them from him well this is the myth but the reality still the separation is the reality yeah? and basically these these movements also have their truth you know? i mean even that uh, disobeying god whatever mother was making totally different yeah presenting this myth as we know she was considering that uh, the snake was the actually the power of evolution and which was tempting and couldn't tempt actually the, the adam adam was not really responsive to that <laughs> temptation of the evolution but eve was more open <laughs> to the idea of growing into higher consciousness uh, and so she took that apple tried the apple of life the apple of from the uh, tree of knowledge or life and from that time on she had totally different perception of what is to be done in order to grow in consciousness and not to be you know that typal being no typal consciousness dynamic consciousness psychic consciousness had to grow through through all the evolution and darkness and that's why they were banished and mother considered that yahweh ego were to be actually an asura rather than a god <laughs> not to offend anyone here who, whoever believes in yahweh as the greatest godhead because God cannot be jealous and cannot have that idea of punishment. Never. Divine God can never punish. Doesn't have that need. Divine is always there to help us. We, we can turn away from the divine, but divine cannot turn away from us. There's no such thing. So on that ground, Mother makes a new kind of conclusion that that thing which was banishing them punishing them now in blood and sweat you will earn your bread and so on uh, you will have difficulties and turmoils so all that belongs to the asuric curse not to the divine curse you know this most probably all of you since you are following Sri Aurobindo and read agenda it's all in agenda but isn't it kind of also true that every time we move away from God, from that inner thing that we suffer, we make difficulties, whereas even if the difficulties are there and we meet it with God within, then we can surmount them. So 
I guess these words or something have been brought about by human beings or something, but behind that there is that essential truth. We actually feel the pain of punishment or maybe that word is too strong, but actually we feel the pain every time we don't align with the God within. Like It's like a disobedience, like every time we do not obey that in our command or something like that, there is a deep suffering. Yes, yeah, suffering is a part of uh, of our evolution. It's a chisel of the gods, yes, which uh, which is working upon us to make us greater. Um, without pain, we would not progress much. Yeah, we would become again type of beings. Pain is the given thing. So, if you look at pain as something to be avoided, yes, then you will have this philosophy of that there is Satan and God or something. There is always, uh, or something is wrong with creation or our separation from God creates pain. So let us rush back to our origin, leave everything behind and go and dissolve ourselves in the divine. No more pain. You are again pure bliss. But that's what he actually didn't want. He wanted us to come and to evolve and to become many. And to become many takes a long time. It's a very tardy process, very difficult process of evolution, with many difficulties to overcome, with a lot of pain in between. But the aim is very different. The aim is not just to get rid of pain and disappear in the divine, and on this ground, on this very ground, Buddhism is not totally fulfilled. Yeah? Because to start with the presumption that Dukkha has to be avoided by whatever means is a wrong move. Not by whatever, by, by the means of progress of consciousness. Yeah? If it is just to avoid and to run away or to find the means not to be in life, to find consciousness which will kind of lead you away from this movement and growth of consciousness. This is something partial, not totally holistically true. So from here we have all these, even in, in, uh, in Judaism you have the same idea of, of uh, avoiding pain. But Agam is not, uh, Veda doesn't have this idea of running away from pain. Pain is a part of the process and Agam has to be avoided. Agam, this narrowing down of consciousness. But in Savitri Shivinda goes even farther. We finished the chapter on a canto on the mother of evil and sons of darkness. And in the end, he breaks through. He finally breaks through all the darkness and narrowness, through Agam, actually, because that is the narrowness. And there, there is this opening taking place. And all that which was, which was partially true uh, gains its deeper truth. All the things which are here, here were inconscient become uh, fully charged with the divine consciousness. It becomes like a, like the meanings of the script of the divine pan man. Yeah? Divine pan man is writing his history by things fully charged with consciousness. The divine is everywhere in everything. It's a very different view on life. So Veda doesn't have that. Veda especially Rig Veda, doesn't run away from dukkham or from pain. It recognizes its place, it wants to deal with it, it wants to avoid narrowing down consciousness. Yeah. And there are two words which are very powerful here. Is one is from root shuch and other from root shud. Notice. Shoshuchat. Yeah. Burn. May he burn again and again. This is Shoshuchat is the intensive, very rare form. Uh, intensive means 
frequentative, burn again and again, yeah? or burn intensively more and more, away, upper, repeatedly burn away. That means sin is not going away in one um, session. It will come again and again. So this infinite night, infinite darkness will be creeping in and the agni has to burn it again and again. This narrowing down of our consciousness, he has to widen the scope non-stop. And then, uh, please, or the command, purify, yes, or shine, as Shirobindo even translates, yeah? shine unto us the bliss. But in Buddhism, even uh, like, isn't there the talk about loving kindness and presence? Oh, yeah, yeah. With your difficulties or okay. something? Well, they did speak many things in Buddhism. I, sp I take the major beginning, yeah, Dukkham. Dukkham as the beginning of the search, how to get out of suffering. Yes, Buddhism discovered millions of valuable things and. Um, methods and meditation and so on and absolutely valuable i'm not saying that i'm saying something more philosophical yeah? buddhism is not a philosophy it's more a practice of some kind it's a psychology more yeah? philosophically it's quite weak truly speaking Not to offend Jayashri. Jayashri was into Buddhism, yes. <laughs> Looking at her face, whether she is offended with this. No, no, I'm not at all offended because I, I completely understand what you're saying. That the very basic, the foundation of Buddhism was to avoid suffering. Right. And, and based on that, you know, they had these other tenets of compassion and mindfulness. Those are all methods, but it was based on a mistaken uh, uh, foundation. Right. You know, and I felt uh, that it was not answering my questions. So I'm not offended at all because I see the clarity now. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. Thank you for sharing this. Because I, somebody, I feel the same way. Yes. Yes, Kinsh. Somebody, Somebody once explained to me that there are two views you can take. All life is unhappiness or all life is bliss. So yeah. there is your choice. <laughs> you, if you did. Yes, true. Very true. Good one. Yes. It's like the glass, uh, full, uh, half full or you know, half empty. It's this type. The choice is always ours. Hmm. We have to make the right choice. Right. Yeah, we have to see what this life is for. There, there is an aim in all this manifestation. And with this avoiding uh, suffering, we do not see that aim. It's a very selfish aim, small aim. It then grows into many, many aspects which are needed for us. But still, the very beginning, the very entry is restricted, so to say. That's what I wanted to say. But these two roots, Shudh and Shuch, are amazing. And there are more roots of this kind. There is Shub, there is uh, Shush. They are all connected, yeah? from the Shu, Shvi, Shvas, to breathe, to hiss, to, to create this kind of heat. Uh, and Shavas is another word, yeah? heat, power, force, flaming force. And so Shuch has this shininess, purity through, through burning, yes. Uh, in the Veda, it doesn't have sense of suffering. It has only sense of brightness or purity. But in the later language, in the post-Vedic period, it has a, already in the Gita, yes, it has already the meaning of uh, suffering. Natvam shochitum arhasi. Krishna says to Arjuna all the time, you should not suffer. Shochitum. And from Rudshuch. From here we have many other words. Shukra, Shukracharya, Shuchi is Venus. 
Shukracharya is the Venus or who is the the teacher of Asuras, yes. And whereas Brihaspati is the teacher of the gods, then Shukracharya is the teacher of Asuras, also Brahmin. So Venus and uh, Jupiter are never kind of together. Recently we saw them together in the sky. Right. So this root is loaded with this uh, luminosity and flaming. Yeah? Shuddhi also. Shuddh. Um, or it's uh, Shugdhi. Shugdha. It's from Shuch. Oh, it's the same. I thought it was, I didn't see it. From Shud. It's not from Shud. It's from Shugd. It's Shuch still. So flame purify, yes? And so she, she translates burn away and flame out on us the bliss. She's going to found his way. Griffith translates chasing with light our sin away. O Agni, shine thou wealth on us. So that's it. Yes? I had a quick uh, question. This flame out on us, the bliss, uh, could it also mean the rapture? You know, when when the bliss is flaming, then it's a state of rapture. Yeah. Eruption. I mean, rapture. <laughs> oh. yes. Rapture and bliss. Rapture you know, is okay. a very good word, very powerful. Yeah. She's been doing love with this word. He's using it all the time, rapture. It's kind of ecstasy. Yeah. Um, Oh, so sweet. I see doggy. He, he was nudging me to, to get up in my lap, so I've taken him up. <laughs> put on screen sometimes. <laughs> we have a very similar one, Nico, as you have. Also, always on the lap. He cannot be by himself. It's very rare. He always needs some warmth of human beings. <laughs> Yes, you are like Nico. What is his name? He's called Sammy. Sammy, oh, lovely. Hello, Sammy. Yes. So well, he, sweet. He is a sweetie. Lovely. All right, number two. Sukshetriya Sugatuya Vasuya Chaya Jamahe Apanach Shoshu Chad Agham. For the perfect path to the happy field, for the exceeding treasure when we would do sacrifice, burn away from us the sin. Literally, these are the instrumental cases, Sukshetriya. Literally, by the perfect Kshetra, yeah, by the perfect field, or by the perfect kind of, yeah. Griffith translates for godly, or for goodly field, for pleasant homes. For wealth we sacrifice to thee. They translate for as a dative case and it is instrumental case. We can translate it also as in declinables. In the in the perfect foundation or by the perfect foundation and by the perfect moving forward and by the perfect uh, shining presence in the substance we sacrifice for our sake to you. Now, why I say for our sake? Because it's Atmanepada. 
we sacrifice, so we are the recipient of this sacrifice. We sacrifice to Agni by three different means, and you can see here quite clearly by Kshetra, by the foundation, something which is like a field or um, place. Sugatu, Gatu is moving, yeah, by the moving forward, by the path by the settlement path and Vasu and the presence of light in the substance. Kshetra and Gatu are quite opposite. Kshetra is something like a settlement from root Kshi to settle. You know? And from here Kshetra it is something on which ground we can be, yeah. stay. No, uh, but it is from the settling or dwelling. Yeah. So by the dwelling and by the moving and by the shining in the embodied state, we sacrifice to you. So three different statuses of our existence. Yeah? And away, yes, burn away from us the sin. The refrain is the same. So what is this dwelling? Dwelling, I mean, how does it be, how is it a status? Yeah, because dwelling is uh, the location, you yes? so body, for example. We, are, ah. we dwell in the body, in the house, yeah. in the field, on the foundation. We are not moving, we are staying. Yeah. Gato is moving, yeah? mm -hmm. so by and staying and moving and shining in. Thank you. There will be yeah, always yeah. something more which is not visible in the words. The rishis will try to use the root, proper root, which will suggest the difference. Otherwise, why should they mention things in this kind of the same yeah, manner, three words, Sukshetriya, Sugatuya, Vasuya, if they have, will be of the same kind or there must be something they want to say more, more holistic, to show that they cover all possible states of our life, yes, by staying, by moving and by uh, being in whatever action, let us say shining in whatever substance, yeah? in whatever state of consciousness, vasuya. I put these three words here, you can see how dictionary gives it. It gives it the same as for instrumental, because it is instrumental. Desire of good fields, desire of wealth or prosperity, through desire of wealth. So, dictionary cannot help much if we don't look into the roots. Vladimir, hmm. I had a question. Yes, this, uh, uh, I was listening to uh, one of your talks uh, on Varna, where you were mentioning about the elementary building blocks. Uh, I was just wondering whether the happy feel could also refer to Akasha. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Akasha is that which is which is our home, yes, in which we are located. Sugato can be related to that way we are moving, time. Time is moving, Akasha is dwelling, and Vasu is shining through you know, all of time and space. Why not? Very good. We, we are limited with categories. We can't have infinite number of categories, yes? Space, time, and what? And presence of the being in, the same, in space and time. That's it. Two locations in space and time and the being, Vasla. The luminous dweller within the substance, as Shirobindo translates Vasla. Luminous dweller. Interestingly, he combined two meanings, was to shine and was to dwell and was to wear 
also to wear the garment to put on. So is it the essence uh, burning away from the sin? Is it uh, a parallel to Prithvi? <laughs> burn away from us, not the sin. From us, the sin. So to say, separate from us, burn it away, cleanse us, yes? Uh, cleanse us from narrowness, from the, mm, yeah. What, what did he say about Prakriti? Can you say it again, please? Um, I, I think you mentioned that word, I think separateness of things in Prithvi, rigidity, uh, hardening. So I was just relating burn away from us the sin. Is it related to that? Like, no, you're moving away from that. I think, so when you're uh, yeah, Prithvi, is actually from Prithu, from Prathrut, which means to extend, to be vast. Prithivi is vast, yeah, the foundation. We have a different philosophy of the Veda. Prithivi is not narrow, yeah? it's opposite, it's very vast foundation, like, like Akasha. But Agam is Amhas, is something which is happening, like the light is turning into the darkness by 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 restriction of its shininess yeah and pervasiveness it's like a, like the black hole which is pulling light inside and is not allowing it to shine out yeah so we see this black hole but don't see it because there is no light coming out but it all the light it seems within the black hole it cannot relieve the the the, the gravitation is so strong that the light is turning back into the black hole. So the light cannot be allowed to shine through. So something similar with Agam, it is uh, such a pull towards the selfishness, <laughs> towards survival of something which, uh, which is supposed to be living for all, but it lives only for itself. Yeah. From here also, Aham, all these words, ahankara later, you will see that it's all connected in this kind of restriction and how to say, there is a word for this, uh, shrinking, yeah, we are shrinking to, to the center, and by the way, the, the whole idea of fear is also shrinking to back to oneself, to one's smaller self, and not being present, as we are present, we should be present all over the world. Our consciousness is everywhere, but we are shrinking back to ourselves, become very small. And that is, that is the Vedic kind of view. There is no contradiction between Purusha and Prakriti yet. There is no such concept yet, even. Uh, and Prithivi and Dyauch are two luminous foundations, Rodasi. They are two shining firmaments which are holding all our souls. This is the father and mother. Prithivi is the mother and Dyauch is the father. And they are giving us the place to be born. We are children of heaven and earth. So it's a bit um, a different view on uh, um, on what we are used to think in philosophical terms later. I do not know. I mean, just maybe I said a few extra things, but didn't know where to go with with your question because with pretty we couldn't see it. Yet. Maybe you meant something else. Can you now better clarify what you meant? After all uh, this, what I tried to say. Yeah. I, I think it was mentioned under Varnas uh, when you went into the building blocks of the senses. And then you talked about the elements of Akasha, uh, you know, the yes. yeah, ether, the fire. And, and it was eye-opening actually because 
I never talk about in those terms, the Varna itself, uh, just consciousness and the vibrations touch each other and then it becomes touch and then there has to be force so that the fire comes and then there is the direction changes, the upper and then uh, like you no know, solidification for forming the forms come out of it. And it, it was so beautiful. So it just, I don't know, when this line came up, I was uh, relating oh, to that. were thinking in those terms of uh, Panchamaha yeah. Bhutani, yes. Panchamaha. Yes, these five great elements in Sankhya. Yeah. Yeah, Sankhya is a development of a later time after Vedas, putting it into more kind of rational language. But Shabindo says that it is a true vision but expressed in the mental language, in more philosophical terms, in, in tatvas. Yes, um, in that sense, yeah, no, okay, yes. Maybe, <laughs> why not? Even this is fitting. If you put Sukshetriya as the ether and Sugatuya as the movement in the ether, that means Vaya. Yeah? Um, why not? Everything is so beautifully, archetypically fitting. And Vasuya is the shining, the, the Tejas or the Agni. So we sacrifice to you by these three great uh, uh, you know, levels of consciousness. Yes, because these are the three major ones. Agni belongs to Earth as a foundation of Earth. Notice before uh, water and uh, Prithivi, before these two lower ones, which belong to taste and smell, uh, we have these three higher ones, yeah? And this Agni, mouth, Vayu, and nostrils, and uh, Surya, sight. This is the, you know, this major, our face represents actually three higher va Varnas, if you will. And in that sense, hmm, Space is a dwelling um, house for all of us. Gato as the movement in space and Vaso is the luminosity. Well, it's a good intuition. Couldn't expect this. To... Just, just want to say that was awesome, Vladimir. Amazing. I, I'm totally floored with this. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. There is. There's always, this is so archetypal, and there's always something else to discover and see. And that knowledge is doing something to us. Though we are using mental language, and we are using mental images, and still something is happening within the consciousness. It tunes itself to see better, to understand better things. It's amazing. Some mysterious process is taking place. Great. Thank you. Thank you for this deep team. Prayat bandishta esham. I will take one more. I thought I will take the whole verse, but as usually we are talking more than reading. Prayat bandishta esham prasmaka sascha surayah. That the happiest of all these many godheads may be born in us, that the seers who see in our thought may multiply, burn away from us the sin. I think it fits also into the next. Multiply. It was taken maybe from the next because he is no multiplication. So I will translate literally. Here we can see Griffith if you if it helps. Best praiser, because Bandishta is the one, the best praiser. Best praiser of all these be he. Prayat Bandishta Esham of these. Of these all the best praiser forward literally yeah? pra pra is used twice prayat bandishtayesham pra asmakasascha surya yeah? so forward forward literally foremost you see 
our chiefs who sacrifice. So here this diction does not require even the verb because the prefix plays that role forward when the best of all these, the best uh, praiser of all these, forward of ours, um, of our best um, priests, yeah, forward, forward, away burn the sin from us. So there's no even a verb at all. <laughs> or maybe, I, I'm sorry, maybe there is a verb, Shoshuchat. Maybe this Shoshuchat is used for Prashoshuchat, Prashoshuchat, Apa Shoshuchat. You see? So Pra Pra and Apa, these are the prefixes. Uh, so to say, shine forward, burn forward, yeah? uh, as the most perfect uh, praiser of the gods of all, burn forward as our best priests can do, burn away from us the sin. This could be the translation. So the Shoshu chat can be implied with pra and pra in the previous line. It's a very, very beautiful poetry then, it looks like. You, know, you have to feel it. It's on the level of feeling. Prayad bandishta esham prasma kasascha suraya apanach Shoshu chat agham. Shoshu chat is used only once with three different places with prefixes. This happens in other verses also. It's a very common thing to do. Yeah? To use once the verb and many times different prefixes. Do you recognize some a little bit language also? Sanskrit, some of you, yeah? Who knows Sanskrit? I yeah I can uh, 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 Vladimir where is the word born in this there is no born here this is what I said because it's in the next born I think she been to took it to here also implying that it is implied in the next because when you read the hymn that born will be kind of staying there and okay. so we have this shadow into this verse we will look into the next let us look into the next and then it will justify it. Prayate again. Prayate agni suraya. Jaye mahi prate vayam. Notice this pra, pra constantly again. And when, so to say, that thy seers, suraya, of flame divine agni, may multiply. Jaye mahi, and we be newborn as thine. Pratevayam Jayemahi, may we be born, burn away from us. So this Jayemahi, may we be born as yours. Surayah, interesting word, Surayah, Suri. Suri is translated as a priest, but truly speaking, it is a luminous ones. You know? Learned man, sage, priest, Jupiter also, interestingly, inciter, institute of the sacrifices, Yajamana. Let us let us take it as Yajamana because Yajamana is the our inner being, inner soul, psychic being. Yes. May we, so to say, that thy seers, he translates as seers. But we can translate as Yajamanas, that thy Yajamanas of flame divine, may we be born as yours, Yajamanas. Those who are making sacrifice in this world. So this one is imposed onto the previous one. Pra, forward, when best of the praises of these. Uh, our Yajamanas 
and Aoi Jamanas, and he continues, and forward, O Agni, Aoi Jamanas, may we be born yeah, as yours. So he combines two verses into one. So that's why he mentions here as may we may be born in us. That the happiest of all these many goddesses may be born in us. Happiest of all these many godheads, Esham, Bhandishtaha. Interesting also word, Bhandishta, shouting most loudly, praising most highly. But this is dictionary. Dictionary always restricts the meaning with the understanding of the, the one who was trying to understand the word. Um, Shobindo translates that happiest of all these many goddesses. Actually, Bandishta is also Bandamana is um, Bandish Yamana is used as lauding happily or welcoming, yeah? welcoming with happiness. Band. Let me check with the dictionary what it says. To be greeted with praise, this is to receive applause. Also, I will, with I will take it. to be or make glad, to shine, to honor, to worship. I will take this into the dictionary for us, that you will have that. See it. Band. It's it's only in the Veda. There's nowhere else. You can see to shine, to make glad, to to honor and to worship even. So Bandhishtra is the most, you know, the highest degree, to the highest degree most, how to say, honored, most um, luminous. And Shambhina translates the, the happiest, the happiest of all these many godheads. He adds many godheads because there is no many godheads. Asmakach cha, asmakasash cha, the Vedic word. And of ours, Surya, our kind of best luminous beings or Yajamanas, those who do the sacrifice. And then he continues, may we be born as yours. Yeah. Could Jaya, Ma Jaya Mahi also be victorious? No, Jayemahi is from Rudjan to be born Jayate with long eye, you see. Jaya with short eye, yes, it's victorious. Yeah? Jaya, the victory. Jaya Shri is victory. Yeah? Not Jaya, because Jaya with long eye is a woman, actually. With short eye, Jaya is the victory. Jayati. Vladimir, uh, in the earlier verse, the seers who see in our thought may multiply. Is this something like um, in the Kena Upanishad, he talks about that which really sees through us, which is the true self? That the seer who see in our thought may multiply. What is he referring to? Is he referring to the inner being or the Atma? Yeah, multiply asmakach because asmakach ours, yeah, and ours suraya um, may multiply. He adds that they become more and more, many of them. They catch the fire, they, the spirit becomes contagious, it ignites other souls and other beings. Yeah? Uh, so, so, so is 
Is it also a growth of our own consciousness first? Could be also, yes, uh, that it belongs to what he calls the, our progeny, yes? because our children, children of our works, in other place he speaks about children of our works as those who support us in our journey. Interesting concept, yeah? Everything what we did, it's like karmic, yeah? becomes a supporter or obstructor of what we are to face in the future. So if I did some punya, the concept of punya is on this ground. So you produce a lot of um, luminous results which become supportive of your it's like steps on the way mm -hmm. could be that thing yes what you mentioned now the seers who see in our thought may multiply but what in our thought where is that thought hmm. Maybe he means Surya, Suri, those, uh, you know, sages, those beings who have luminous minds, um, luminous thinking, you know, that so maybe is, you know. So maybe you develop know. the luminous consciousness mm. more and more. Right. May it grow in us, something. Right, right. That's what he has. So there are two interpretations are that they multiply in the sense that more and more catch the fire or they are just spreading more the luminosity of their consciousness, yes. It's something like uh, uh, like in the Isha Upanishad it is uh, yes, uh, Samuha Teja, yeah? Vyuha Rashmin, spread your race. Samuha uh, Tejo, yes, uh, concentrate the luminosity and spread the rays. So, the spreading the rays, yeah, that's what you are referring to. Mm -hmm. Yes. And that will burn away the sin. Yeah. The separation. Good. Good idea. Suraya. He, into one word he put so much yes mm. great we can stop here for today so we covered only three verses there are four more to go i think maybe next time we finish the end we'll take another one already from uh, from the next seer kishio bendo took only two from kutsangiras there are many more but we are not going through other hymns we did take. For now, at least. Later, maybe, we will take all of them. Okay, I will close with mantra. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santo Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu ma kashchit dukha bhag bhavet om shanti 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 Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye.